again it's Elizabeth here and today I'm looking at Happy Haunting from Craft Consortium. It's the sixth collaboration with the very talented Hells Coupleditch and I've had these papers for a little while now. I have made all of my samples but I'm going to share with you the paper pad the parts that I have left and then I have a project that I would like to concentrate on today. So here are the toppers that you can use. As usual with this front page there are nine different designs to work with. Very very cute characters and then you've got the front cover where the characters are slightly larger and you can cut into them if you dare. I do struggle with that bit as viewers to my channel will already know. So then when we turn the page you've got these amazing silhouetted Halloween scenes. So you've got the ha haunted house and the tombstones and the flying witch in the sky. The colours are amazing. I'm not a huge fan of Halloween but I like the idea of this. It's quite childlike and you can do other things with it. We've got the stars and we've got the silhouetted bats. And then you've got these amazing cobwebs. The black paper really lifts up the design. And the purple is almost like a plummy purple. But you can see that some of it has been embossed. You've got that sheen. And as always, the quality of the paper is superb. This page is really handy because you can cut into all of the sentiments. Uh, lots of trick and treat, lots of colour matching as well. So you've got the orange and the purple and the green. Goes really well with the projects. Then you've got another set of words. The lime green background really makes the wording pop. So I use this page quite a lot. And you can see how it all mixes and matches as ever with the way that Craft Consortium do things. So it's those purple, the green and the orange but somehow it all goes together. They're really really good with their colours. I use this page a lot. You can cut into it. You can also use it as a background. Um, you can add the little MDF embellishments to it as well. Very, very simple idea, but very, very effective. This is the almost like a polka dot paper that you could really use any time of the year, but it does happen to go as a very good background with the wording. And again, it mixes and matches with the silhouetted landscapes. More of the bats, and again, they've been embossed. So all you have to do is take a circular die, cut into them, and you've got a very simplistic card. These are the lined papers that um, I ended up using all of these to make the pumpkin project I'm going to share with you later on. Um, and then these are the pumpkins themselves in all their glory. So I cut these out in banners. Very, very vibrant. The ghouly ghosts are very happy ghosts, it's a bit like Ghostbusters, they're not scary. And this last page is just magical with the patchwork. You've got more card cutouts at the back. That house is phenomenal. Um, and yes, lots to be playing with. Here is the original paper pumpkin that I made for the launch of Happy Haunting. I used those brilliant striped papers but when they were gone they were gone and I did use a lot of them but today I'm going to show you how to make the pumpkin but the papers will look slightly different so let's begin shall we? To make the pumpkin you are going to need several strips of paper um, I adapted my design because I use quite a lot of paper for the original pumpkin that I made for Craft Consortium. So this one is slightly smaller. So you'll need, well I use 12 by 12 paper because that's what I had. But you'll need um, to have at least a 24 inch strip. 
with any width that you choose so if you imagine that this is a rosette that you're going to make up you need two strips of paper to make a full rosette so these are the dimensions that I'm going to work with for this particular pumpkin and I will leave them in the description and if I get time I'll write a blog post for you as well so you're going to need two strips of one and a half inch width four strips of one and three quarter inch st uh, strips four strips again of two and a quarter inch strips and two strips of two and three quarter inch strips so I'll very quickly show you my hand-drawn diagram which will explain that the two and three quarter inch strips are the center of your pumpkin so you're you want to make it into a circle so you have to make each layer of the pumpkin slightly smaller so I've gone down in half inch increments so the working towards the base we've got a two and a quarter ink strip rosette and a one and three quarter ink strip rosette and then when we move to the top we repeat this pattern so we've got two and a quarter one and three quarters and then the one and a half ink strip one will fit the uh, stalk that you're going to make at the end one more thing i want to quickly say before um, we move on to making one rosette that um I learnt from experience not to cut down the strips first. The trick to it is to take your 12 by 12 paper and then score all of your folds before you cut down the strips. So this particular rosette is a one and a half inch depth. I quite like them when they're a quarter of an inch but it works well for this. So what i'm doing is i'm scoring at half one one and a half two and so on so yes do all your scoring first and then cut your strips so i went away and i concertinaed um by concertina i mean fold backwards and forwards um all my different strips i also discovered that you're better to do one of the jobs at a time so cut them all in one go concertina them all in one go and then um, stick them all in one go because particularly with this stage you want to be able to leave the um, glue to really set in now uh, I found that PVA glue is best for this I found that Colau made it a little bit soggy but it really is your glue of choice so uh, the real key to it is allowing the parts to stick at each stage I use uh, mini pegs to help me with this part so then we need to stick this other side here and then I always think of it as a uh, lampshade you're making a lampshade at this point so away from the camera i would leave this to dry um for as long as you possibly can like so and then i have a little production line of all the different layers that i'm going to build and then in the meantime, I punch out some circles and I get my hot glue gun going. I have tried this with wet glue before, but I personally prefer to use a hot glue gun because it makes it uh, more stable. And for showing you quickly, um, I want an instant grab, but use your glue of choice. But just bear in mind, it will take you longer for everything to set. You're going to take your two circles and on one of them get the prepare the circle with some glue and that will become clear in a moment. 
there are lots of tricks on Pinterest and things on how to do this but um, if you haven't done this before and I use rosettes on card making quite often this is an easy way that I have found so you take your, lamp, your uh, lampshade and you pinch the sides and you push it down just keep your hands away from the hot glue and then you bring it in like so give it a moment to settle you'll find that it will naturally want to come back there I can feel that it's beginning to take now and then I hold it in place with my second uh, disc and there we go and again I will make these all in one go and I'll put something heavy on top uh, like a um, stamp block that's very good and then I'll keep going and keep going until I've made them all so that everything has a chance to dry and then I come back and I'll uh, make up the pumpkin so now we have our little rosettes lined up so you're going to end up with two that are two and a quarter wide uh, one that is two and three quarters so this is our center uh, two that are one and three quarter and then one and a half which is our top so when you come to the one that's one and a half you only want to put a tab on the back and don't push the center of the rosette in too far leave yourself a little gap and the reason being is is that you want to make a um, stalk to fit in here like this so I take a piece of craft card and I ink the edges I use vintage photo and then you want to quite tightly bend this over and you're not really making a um, cylinder you're making a rectangular stalk can you see it's more a rectangle than a than a cylinder so you keep going and keep going and then you just want to see if that's going to fit I'm going to do one more roll and I'm seeing whether that fits into you want it as tight as possible so that's going to fit in there I'm going to keep going just to see if I can use the whole strip if not I'm going to take some off yeah I'm going to use the whole strip so that was round about um, six centimeters width and round about 10 to 12 centimeters length and you'll find that that will fit into the gap so to make it look a little bit rustic you're going to use this um, ceiling point that you've got here and then go over it again with your ink and just rough it up a little bit and then leave that to settle so now we're ready to create the pumpkin itself so this is a piece of mdf you can use card but you want a base for the pumpkin to settle on um, so you have to imagine that your base is smaller so you're going to build up oh the other thing i forgot to say is that i did use some brown ink and I edged all of the rosettes just to define the creases you can add as much ink as you want it depends on the colour of the paper on the first one that I made with the 
happy haunting paper i didn't use quite as much ink because the color was so vibrant but i'm quite liking the way this one is working out so we start off with our one and three quarter ink every time that i use these measurements this is the width of the paper not the diameter of the rosette so we're going to begin putting it together we've got the hot glue quite a lot of hot glue and that will hold down the sizal and also place the first rosette which is one of the one and three quarter and then we're going to come out slightly so we're going with a two and a quarter so more glue On here and then we're just going to place it down and what happens is you need to move your rosette so that it's you twist it slightly so that these edges are off center there we go Right, so that's your two and three quarter, no, your two and one quarter. Now you need your largest rosette because this is going to be the, the center of your pumpkin. So again, we're going to move in with the hot glue. And I'm just moving around in my, at my desk to centre this because it's a little bit tricky because the it's not directly in front of me because of the camera but yep I'm happy with that so you're you're really creating a, a sphere a paper crafting sphere it's all an illusion really right now we're getting smaller again so we've got to go with the two and one quarter just get another hot glue gun stick ready there we go right so let's go in with the two and a quarter just turning it slightly there we go so it's beginning to come in now like so and then we're going to go in a, one more time with the one and three quarter and again turn it slightly okay and then last but not least we've got the one and a half so i'm going to go in with the glue one last time put our little base on and all the time you just want to make sure that the it's centering out so this one needs to go that's it there we go and then there's our little it's almost like a cigar a little cigar stalk and that's going to fit in there so a little bit more glue it's right in the center And that can sit just again make sure that it's straight we're then ready to add our leaves so the last little touch are the wispy tendrils and the leaves and I happen to use some of the new dyes from Lisa Horton so I've used this vine from through the grapevine so you can see it here 
and I've used these fabulous um, leaves. I know it says from Little Acorns, but I've cut them in craft cards and I think it just finishes off the design. So I'm using some ink again, just to finish off those edges. And what I did was I cut it out twice, once in a, a green, and then you take out the centre, and then I cut again in craft card, and I laid them on, laid them on the top. So they're very useful dies because you can almost mat and layer them in different colours. So I think I'm going to go with a touch of hot glue. No, we'll go with the wet glue this time and we'll put some wet glue around this curving vine on my original I used the craft consortium uh, wording from the happy haunting but I think I'm going to leave this one to be a little bit more natural so it's more like a an autumnal decoration rather than something specifically for Halloween. You just want to curl these round and then let's look where our pumpkin is sitting. So let's go, as I say, I know these aren't quite the same leaves as you would get on a pumpkin, but I just think that they work so well that it's worth incorporating them. So let's go with the larger one first. There we go. And let's place that one down. Obviously this is going to need time to rest. And then we'll bring this one round here. Like so. And I might even leave it at that because you've got the tendrils as well. Let's have a look at it from above. So we've got two or we've got three. Yeah, okay, let's go with the three. Sometimes it's just worth looking at things from, a, from another angle. There we go. leave that to dry but you can see if I bring it up that you've got yourself a little pumpkin so as it settles I really quite like it in this colour I might I might do some more of these because they almost look like autumnal squash you can imagine a, a scene can't you with them all laid out and if you wanted to make them for children all you've got to do is put a couple of eyes and a mouth on there but there you go one paper pumpkin if you like this video don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can see more of my projects from craft consortium i will do my best to link the products that i have used today but if you do have any questions then please just message me don't forget to follow Craft Consortium across social media and join their Facebook group, Craft Consortium Network. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.